What's up guys? Picking up where we left off in the last video. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. Just the unboxing and uh, the comparison with the old Mark 7 racing line intake hose. But uh, you can look in here, see how ugly this hose is to this nice air box. Still working on, uh, I might just try and retrofit my racing line hose from my Mark 7R to this. But this down here gives me a problem, this nipple's larger, whatever. Anyway, um, you can see where the inlet goes, it looks like a T30 there, and I'm not even sure right there, I just, the sun just literally drops, so it doesn't give you a good camera angle, but it should just be a couple of screws and some clamps, pretty straightforward. And here we are with this, this was separate, I had to, had to pop this in, lube it up, pop it in, this is like super simple stuff, make sure you lube up your O-ring, and uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and toss this bad boy on. I'm really excited. Ladies and gentlemen, pretty straightforward process. Pull off the engine cover. You got this guy right here, seven millimeter or flathead here, and then two T30s. That is literally all it is. We will start off with getting the hose off. That's just a seven mil. This, this is a great tool. I absolutely love this tool. It locks in. Throw it on here, squeeze it, lock it, actually lock it, boom, easy. Throw this guy on here, It'd be interesting to see uh, if there's any oil sitting down in here. So, oh yeah, so we got the connector for, oh that's neat, show this a close up to you guys here Actually, before I pull it off. It's actually not super annoying if I can get it to focus. See there, there's a tab there and a tab just on 180 from there. So it's a super simple tab. I really like that it's not all dumb. Anyway, back to getting it off here. See uh a little squeeze and a wiggle and it's right off that is way too easy so yeah definitely got some oil i can't see the screen definitely a little wet with oil in there that's to be expected see this will match the type of thing they made for this one so it just clips right in same thing very nice next up like i said two t30s there's one here and then 180 from that Hidden down here a little bit, but uh, should be able just to get a little a little T30 extension cake. It actually might be a little too long. Off camera, I cheated and used my electric ratchet. I felt like this was metal at first, but it's not. There's definitely some oil dripping in there. All right, guys. And let's off, so it's mandatory we get a look inside the turbo. Boom, there you go, that's where one screw goes, that's where the other screw goes. Very nice. Looks to be a pretty beefy turbo, I'm not going to lie. It's a great looking setup going on here. I was not expecting this to be such a difference. Wow, that is... That is huge. I could literally fit, I mean, and that's the inlet. It does taper down a little bit, but still, like, holy moly. Like, even, so big part versus big part, I mean, it just sits on in there <laughs> and gobbles it up. So, I mean, it might not add a bunch of power, but at the very least, your wastegate shouldn't have to work as hard. So we'll free up some some airflow. All right, I dig it. You guys got to see the turbo. Let's see it again. Check them fins out. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's get this baby in. See how she looks. Now this is interesting and quite nice. You can see this side is slotted, and on the OEM one, it's not. So what you can do, since it's kind of it's kind of tight down there, but not really, you can put that screw in already, and then set it on there, and then you can just screw in your top one. So that kind of adds ease to install. Very, uh, it's very nice of them. 
it's already easy, it just made it that much easier. I just realized the PCV goes directly into the turbo. That is interesting. I was thinking it went into the intake like before, but no, it shoots it like right, right in there. That is, yeah. There's a hole right here. Just blast that shit in there. That's neat. As simple as do re me. She's in. Need to finish screwing that screw in and put that one in, but can't get more simple than that. Pretty sick. I really like where the racing line is. You can't see it from every angle because of that hose going over, but it's there. All right, we got that bad boy on. Too freaking easy. Um, here we are. Comparison of the the hoses. Definitely a sizable increase. You don't have all the airflow getting messed up by the ridges in there, I guess. And threw that clamp on already real quick. We're about to throw it in. We just got two more clamps. And we'll be done. All right, guys. This is the uh, last bit of the road. This is a pretty simple process. You got your hose down here, which is a hard hose. I don't even know if you can. I guess you can spin it a little bit. But getting these tabs lined up just right on this maybe can you guys see you can get lined up where the tabs pop in on this is what's going to be interesting so we'll have to test fit it i have to set it on here test fit it and i have these off probably i don't know 20 or so degrees so i have to loosen this up twist it and try again and then pull it off then tighten it so we'll go back and forth till this is lined up just right and then fully install it. All right guys, so what I've learned, cause this is kind of a trial and error process here. Sorry, it's blurry. One, three, two, one. So you guys can see, this is the seven millimeter to tighten the clamp that the diverter valve hose goes to. So the clamp isn't tight, but it is connected right here. Sorry the lighting's but. So this thing can technically rotate right now. So as you're putting it in, the angle of this kind of changes. It, it's hard to get this just right. You can then get it in there and get it clipped in. So leaving it loose for now and I'll be able to tighten this right here once the intake's fully on. Don't forget your clamp here and your clamp here. So what I'm gonna do now is just slide this baby on down like it's not connected yet. What this is. So I'll be able to tighten that because the angle will set itself once it's down. I'll tighten that, tighten this, tighten this, and we'll be done. You guys remember that screw from earlier? I just rotated the clamp a little bit right there in the center of the screen. I'll tighten that bad boy up for the diverter valve. Got the back one tight, kind of tucked it down in there. Used a stubby 7 mil to tighten it since my tool was sitting in the firewall with the long 7 mil. Uh, tighten this down. We're good. Very happy. Really hate how this looks though. Really need to get rid of that. And then uh, might have something special to match the engine bay here shortly. All right, it looks no different than what I did before other than I rotated this clamp and I tightened it down here. I like things hidden. Um, if you had a golf, you can't do that because you guys actually have a battery here. I do not. My battery is in the trunk. So that's pretty much the only difference between the two that I really know of in the engine bay um yeah she's in and uh we're gonna run in here hang out with the baby for a minute grab the mother-in-law's boyfriend we're gonna go on a liquor run um i turn the gopro on we'll go play around a little bit see if we can tell a difference i highly doubt you'll be able to tell a difference in the butt dyno maybe a little bit of sound still doubt that but it's gonna help the turbo breathe makes the engine bay look a lot better oh, let's put this on Let's see, uh, see that. Oh yeah, much better than that dumb accordion hose. Ah, that ruins it though. That ruins it. That ruins the shot. Hey, she's in. You can go up here and look. Oh, you can barely see it back there. Is your initial looking straight on at the car that covers it? Oh well. Once again, Sean, it's not stock. Thank you, buddy. Ladies and gents, we're back here the next day, looking like a just got out of prison or something <laughs> this had a guy he came all the way from near dc brought his passat down and i man i'm dirty huh 
Bars Passat now and I uh, put lowering springs on it and uh, some underglow. So, an easy 200 bucks on this Sunday afternoon. But uh, another part came in the mail. It's a five second install. Let's unbox it, toss it on. Wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna get one of these. And then, thank you, Justin. Uh, red, red Justin. Justin with the red Mark 7. Um, saw this on his car, so. Had to get one myself. Didn't think they were all that great, but figured I'm gonna wind up keeping the washer reservoir in this car for some time, and they hold their value, so. We got the racing line cap for that. I'm a sucker for billet stuff. The only thing we're missing now is the, uh, whatchamacallit, on the oil cap. And that's on order. So this is a interesting, it's like hard plastic that this is attached to. Toss it on. I didn't even realize it says perfect performance on it. So now we pretty much got all the caps. We got that cap, that cap, waiting on this one. We got that one. I prefer this one over theirs. And then if my car is unlocked, we got the, got the cap back there, so. All right guys, as promised, here's uh, we're gonna go take a lap around this little area I found a couple weeks ago. Um, I definitely think there is a little more sound. I never really run around without music on, so. We will give you guys a launch control here. And we're gonna do a, a lap around this area. It's so much fun. Ready? I did this, I did it with traction full on, so, uh, wow. Holy shit, this car's going kind of fast. Shoo! Good lord! This thing is not slow. It's going to be so much fun at autocross. Can't really hear the intake noise, though. That's what I was going for. fun holy shit wow all right i'm gonna try and do a lap without talking so we can get one more lap maybe we can hear a little bit Whew. that launch control is crazy man too much fun ah damn <laughs> i love this car oh man all right let's see if we can aim this up right no cars around here we go. brakes love me after that Whew. all right guys <laughs> that's all i got thanks for watching stay tuned for more content and we'll catch you on the flip flop